Welcome. My name is Natalie Mack, and I am the HSLDA Military Community Outreach Coordinator. Our topic today is the European Homeschool Conference. To all my fellow military homeschooling parents joining us on Facebook, we're so glad that you are here. Will you please let us know in the comments where you are joining from? And any questions that you have, you can go ahead and also put those in the comments. We're going to save time a little bit later to get to those. So today joining me is Michelle Segrin, president of KMC Homeschoolers, Kaiserslautern Military Community. We love our acronyms, right? And the coordinator right. of the European Homeschool Conference or the EHC. <laughs> Although I haven't met Michelle in person yet, I was connected to her by Susan Rakowski, a school liaison officer at Lake and Heath, whom I met at the MSEC, Military Child Education Coalition, Global Summit last July. I'm so excited that HSLDA can support your conference, Michelle, by allowing me as well as Kevin, who is one of our attorneys, to attend. We are thankful to also to be able to provide child care for the attendees. So, Michelle, please tell us more about you and your family. Oh, well, first of all, Natalie, thank you for having me on here. It's a, been a pleasure working with it, you and everyone there at HSLDA. So we are very excited here at the H EHC, European Homeschool yeah. Conference. Um, like Miss Natalie says, my name is Michelle Segrin. Um, my husband is currently still active duty. He um, is putting in his packet. I think he actually put it in today to retire after 31 mm -hmm. years. Um, so we went in for the long haul. Uh, we have two amazing children, Ava and Aiden, and they are actually both in ninth grade because of homeschooling. I was able to kind of bump up Ava a little bit. Um, we've been in Germany now a total of 14 years and we plan on staying. We don't, we plan on staying here and making this home. Um, Patrick and I might retire to Spain, but we'll see. Oh, that's so awesome. I definitely, we were over in Naples, Italy. I wanted to stay too. I wanted to retire. My mm. husband had different ideas, but in any case, yeah, I'm right? excited. So now I have a place to come and visit, a place to stay. So I'm inviting myself. <laughs> so, Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> so Kevin, I'm always excited to work with you as well. Would you go here, please share with our audience about you, your family, military experience, all the things, anything that you would love to share with us? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Natalie, for the invitation to join. Um, Michelle, I look forward to meeting you uh, here in a couple months as well. Um, yeah, so I'm a staff attorney here at HSLDA. I'm also the director of global outreach um, at HSLDA as well. Um, I've been here a little bit less than a year, so it's a fairly new position, but I'm very excited to, to join the team here, along with Natalie in particular. Um, I was on active duty with the Air Force for 10 years from 2009 to 2019. Uh, when I separated active duty, I moved to the reserve component where I served for three years full-time in the Alaska Air National Guard. And I still serve uh, with them in a part-time capacity. As a matter of fact, a week from tomorrow, I will fly up to Alaska for 10 days to uh, do my drill duty and uh, participate in exercise. I'm still very much engaged. I, look, I love wearing the uniform when I get the chance. And I'm very excited to come over to uh, support this European Homeschool Conference. I hope it's a very, uh, I hope it's a huge blessing to many, many homeschool families there. Um, we were stationed in Ramstein. It was our first duty assignment uh, when I joined the Air Force in 2009. So it's near and dear to our heart. I understand why people want to stay there and don't want to leave. And uh, we're looking forward to, to coming back. So thanks, Natalie, again. So you and your family had a great experience as well overseas. And so you Absolutely. understand what I was saying, right? Yep. That's so awesome. So I want to also mention to our replay viewers, please go ahead and leave a comment. Let us know that you did get a chance to watch. And if you have any questions, please put them in. We do go back and try to capture those and respond as well. So I know the KMC or the Kaiserslautern military community is the largest concentration of Americans outside of the continental United States or CONUS. So I imagine there are lots of homeschooling families in your group. Would you tell us a little bit, Michelle, about the KMC Homeschoolers? Yes, ma'am. So KMC Homeschoolers started August of 21. So we're fairly new. That does not mean that homeschooling is new here in the community because there's been other groups. Um, I am very um, military trained as a, you know, army wife that I need everything to <laughs> To, to make sense. And so there was a few groups that were locally KMC homeschoolers and they had park meetups and this and that. So I thought, let's start a little hub. 
And that's basically what we did. Um, our group now has 477 people in it. Um, wow. I don't believe every single one of them actually homeschools. I will say probably more than half. A lot of them are thinking about homeschooling or asking questions and this kind, kind of nature. Um, yes. We do have a weekly co-op. And we have, I just counted before we went live, we have 49 events for this month alone. Oh, um, wow. And those events are ways to connect the kids between bowling club and rock climbing and um, book club. And of course, I can't think of them all right now, but um, it's a pretty active group. <clears throat> Excuse me. So yeah, it, it, it keeps me busy <laughs> to say the least. And it's not just me, of course, there's a team of people um, that work behind the scenes to keep it going. Yes, definitely a team. I did see um, that you had the nice graphics for all of the activities and events. And I took that back to my board for Fort Belvoir Home Educators, where I'm president. And I said, oh, we need to do something like this. So I did steal that from you. So Perfect. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, the, the graphics running, were, yeah, yeah, the, the running, running joke here. Them, uh, yeah. The running joke here is if there's an event, call Michelle, she'll make you a flyer. I mean, I make flyers for <laughs> everything. I mean, everything. Let's do a field trip. Let's have a flyer. If, if it doesn't have a flyer, it's not legit. That's my that's my theory. Yeah, yeah no, they're, they're beautiful. And you did a great job. Always getting in Thank front you. of the, uh, the group members is so important. So, so let's transition to talk about the conference. So it is May 4th through the 7th. And yes, it yep. is there at uh, Edelweiss, so in a uh, small town of Garmisch. And so beautiful, Correct. beautiful. Um, and so, and this is just your second year. And wow, I've looked at the agenda and it is incredible. I've, the members have commented, oh my gosh, I don't know what, what, what to attend and how to do it. And they've just been so excited. And at least that's what I've been reading in the comments in your in your European Homeschool Conference Facebook group. So you've been working yeah. really hard. And I know you mentioned the team. So tell me a little bit about your team. I want to definitely shout them out. I've worked and interacted with them, but I want to give you a chance to shout out your team and let us know anything about how it's grown from last year. Okay, perfect. Yes. Oh my gosh, my team. Uh, well, first let's talk about how the um, how the conference has grown. Last year, we had I think um, about thirty participants. We had two rooms. Um, we had about four or five thousand dollars in donations from different companies that sent things in. Um, this year, we have doubled in our participants. We have quadrupled the rooms. We have over doubled the money. Um, I believe we're almost at 11, 12,000, if I'm not mistaken. Wow. Um, and we have six rooms. I mean, it is, whoosh, it, it's just grown and with the help of HSLDA because of the childcare. So that was a big thing, especially being overseas. We don't have family that can just fly over quickly to take care of the kiddos. Um, yes. so, and not having the kids in the workshops was um, something that we had discussed very early on with the team um, that yes. we did not want. And so um, having the child care has been huge and it's almost full. I think I don't have that number, but I think I have seven slots left. So wow. um, awesome. that's just helpful. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the team has grown as well. We're all homeschool moms. Um, last year was myself and Danielle Rafferty, um, who is my uh, donations coordinator. So she sends yeah. all the letters to the donation and the companies and asks for donations. And she's amazing. Um, she's also my editor when I have to write a paper. Okay. So it sounds <laughs> Miss Danielle, because she's amazing at writing. Um, and this year we added on Miss Miriam. Miss Miriam is yes. doing my speaker uh, coordination. So she's um, contacting all the speakers, getting them in line, making sure, you know, that they have everything that they need. And we'll have Miss Erin Gonzalez, which she has not really um, been too forward uh, because she deals with the virtual speakers. So anything that's okay. video based is going through Erin Gonzalez. So we are adding that element this year that we did not have last year. Uh, so we're trying to make sure that companies, the states who cannot fly over still are able to participate and still are able to get their uh, companies in front of military families um, stationed overseas. So they have video. So we have a whole afternoon just dedicated to I think we have 15, um, if I'm not mistaken, uh, 
video companies send in videos um, with correspondence and that kind of stuff as well. Wow. Wow. That's awesome. That is awesome. So I, as I'm, I, we have our script here and I'm trying to follow it, but my mind is going with so many thoughts as you're speaking. And so Miriam, I want to shout out, she is not actually there in the KMC. She is in Wiesbaden. So she's in Wiesbaden. You know, yeah. and, oh, bless her heart. That girl drives out here every month because we have monthly meetings since November. Um, and she drives down to us. And I mean, Miriam has been amazing. Absolutely amazing. And yeah, we chat, me and the girls and I chat probably every, I mean, if I don't say every day, it's almost every day. Wow. Wow. Um, Also, we wanted to mention Ruth as well. And I know I I have here, I'm going to talk about the school liaison officers in a bit um, and that whole piece. So I don't want to forget. So we're going to come back to Ruth, but Ruth, we we won't forget you because... (laughs) So I know that I'm going to be presenting several high school workshops on uh, transcripts, developing a four-year high school plan, Mm -hmm. essential skills for teens. And um, all of these are, uh, you know, traditional workshops that all of our awesome high school educational consultants here at HSLDA, we're all trained to do the same. I'm also going to offer something a little bit unique as under the military outreach program that I had up here for HSLDA. And that is a training just like the one that I did in San Antonio last September for the United States Air Force School Liaison Program Managers Global Summit 2.0. I think I have that right. And a shout out to Lori Phipps for leading that and for inviting me after we met at the MSET Global Summit. Thank you, Lori. If you're listening, I appreciate you for that opportunity to come and train the school liaison. The Air Force ones came in from all over the world. So I'll be offering a similar one alongside Ruth. Um, for those school liaison officers there in Europe who will be attending the conference. So that's that's somewhat of a new piece, I think, that um, is added correct. on as well. So I'm excited yes, correct. about Laura, that. Yeah, our school liaison officers, a lot of them are new to the homeschool community, right? They don't, um, they've never homeschooled. They don't know what it's about. So they're always learning and always wanting to learn more about it. Um, we have a local Q&A that we do here. And Lynn was actually there this morning with me. So our school liaison officer here. So she's able to come in and learn. So when families go to her and say, hey, I want to homeschool. Where do I start? She knows exactly where to plug them in. So it's very crucial that I think our slows do learn about homeschooling, what it's about, where to start, who to contact. Um, If she doesn't know all the information, it's important to always know who to turn that information to. Definitely, definitely. Um, Here here at uh, Fort Belvoir, where I mentioned earlier that the group that I lead, um, the relationship that I have with the school liaison officer there has been so impactful for our group as a whole. And that's one of the messages that I really hone in on with my fellow military homeschool support group leaders is if you don't have a connection and a relationship with your school liaison officer, if you have not reached out, please reach out. My interactions and my understanding from them is they really do serve us as military homeschoolers, any military connected child and education, those two things. And we totally fall under that. So definitely, if you haven't reached out and you're listening to this, please reach out. If you don't know who that person is, please reach out to me. I pretty much have made contact all the way up to headquarters for all of them. I did invite them yeah. to watch this uh, this live as well. So I am so, um, so much of an advocate of the school liaison just because of my own relationship and my experience has been, has been good. So yeah. Yeah. I know yeah. they're wonderful. Yeah. And now, yes. I, Kevin, go ahead. I, I want you to come on in. Talk yeah, about what you're doing. Michelle could just uh, describe what the school liaison officer really briefly, what they, uh, who they are, what role they fill within DOD. And, yes. you know, that may help to kind of connect on why it's important to develop that relationship locally. Yes, good. good yeah, absolutely. So um, when we have like this morning was a prime example, we had our Q&A at the library and people ask, well, can my kids still take classes at the school? Um, and that's where Lynn would pipe in. And so Lynn brings out any, um, you know, any pamphlets, any information, answer any of those type of questions, because the schools do have auxiliary. And in in Europe, um, I know it's a little bit different state by state, but it goes kindergarten through 12th grade. 
And so that is a big resource that a lot of the parents here use, um, whether it's specials, whether it's, you know, PE for the younger kids or sports for the older ones. And Lynn's able to um, connect them with the school that they're at, with the um, Georgia Sports office, and she knows all that information. I could find out, I'm sure, but why if Lynn has it all there and she, ha you know, she's the perfect per person to ask for it. Yeah. No, that's great. I mean, I think it's important just for folks to know that they're they're really kind of a critical link. Yes. <laughs> Particularly yes. Yeah. with uh, my, Michelle, you said you've been there for uh, 14 years in Germany. You know, we moved five times in 10 years on active duty. So really hopping around. And when you're coming new, if there's yeah. a connection existing with the slow, it's helpful for other families to come in and say, hey, what, what are the options? What are the capabilities? What can be provided right. here? So, um, anyways, if not for yourself, you, you may benefit a fellow military family as they come in because you exactly. cultivated that relationship. That is so exactly. awesome. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I love it. It's yeah. And when we were overseas, the last duty assignment overseas was Naples, Italy. And we were able to, again, interact with our slow and able to take advantage of the resources they are on the installation, as well as, like you mentioned, Michelle and Kevin, this is in his wheelhouse with legal, but uh, homeschooling overseas is, is a completely different ball game, especially in the NATO it countries is. under, you know, that if you're on orders and, you know, under the self agreement. So um, yeah. definitely it's completely different. And that high school sports piece was such a big deal for our children. Um, our youngest daughter was able to play soccer for the Naples High School uh, Wildcats and uh, say Forza Napoli, you know, we were able, so she was able yeah. to get picked up to play D1 soccer. So it's a different experience overseas. And like Kevin said, that school liaison officer makes all the difference. So yeah, absolutely. Kev Kevin, I want you to talk about what you be, you will be presenting on there at the conference as well. Yeah. So one of the uh, we, we just touched on the NATO sofa. Um, if you're homeschooling in Europe, you're probably like I was when I was there going, what is what's the actual legal status that I fall under? Does the NATO actually talk about homeschooling? Is this is it kind of a, a situation where we, you know, Americans just really don't talk about it with their fellow Germans? You know, can you be open in your communities with what you're doing and how you're interacting um, and so, uh, what, what I won't guarantee certainly is that I'll give you all the answers, but I will certainly give you some, some thoughts and considerations, um, having worked in the Ramstein law center, um, which is a legal office of about 40 to 45 people. I think it's one of the biggest legal centers, at least in the air force, um, and talking to the international attorney there. Um, so that's one of them, which I think is important on what that will look like. Um, Michelle, it would be good to know kind of what countries the folks are coming from so that I can try to look into those in terms of the attendees. So that's maybe a follow-up for us afterwards. Um, yes. And then I will um, I will be uh, accompanied by my wife, Wendy, um, who uh, we I, I didn't really give much of a personal background, but uh, my wife, Wendy, and I have been homeschooling for 15 years. We've got eight children. The oldest is 21. And then we have seven at home that are uh, ages 16 to three. So she's coming with me. We're going to do a joint session on kind of just lessons learned from 15 years of military marriage. Um, and, uh, you'll be blessed by her since she's, uh, <laughs> she's in the trenches every day, um, as a homeschool mom, uh, as the families who, who are going to be there. So I hope you'll be encouraged and blessed on just some of the lessons that we've learned together and you'll have an opportunity to hear from her directly. So, um, yeah, we'll talk about the sofa, the, the legal stuff, and then we'll just talk about what it's like as a homeschool family over the course of uh, 15 years. So there you have it. Yeah, I was excited to see that workshop, Kevin, with you and Wendy. So I'm hoping, I'm not sure if I'm free, but I, w I hope I'm free because that was, sounds like that would be really great. And Wendy's such a sweetheart. So I'm glad to have have met you all last year at AFI and, and continuing. Now we're working together, so it's awesome. Right. So, so um, and like we mentioned, you have great help with your team and, and we mentioned several of them. How much planning goes into hosting a conference like this, Michelle? Because you have grown. When I heard those yeah. stats from from last year to this year, and when I yeah. made contact with you, I didn't really, I honestly didn't know this was, that was only your first year. So I knew when HSLDA comes in, you know, we try to come up, we come in to come alongside as at least right. under the, I'm hmm. speaking from outreach specifically, we come in to support leaders who are doing great things right. in their community, homeschooling leaders. And so, you know, uh, I didn't, I, you know, I, I knew 
I knew our presence would up the ante a little bit, but I didn't, I didn't, and it yeah, I didn't want it. To, yeah. Yeah. But, you know, hopefully, I mean, you know, hopefully it'd be a blessing, but we wanted to make sure we stayed to, you know, in our position to come alongside and support you. And so, yes, tell us a little bit about the planning and just the sacrifice. Yeah, so the absolutely. Time. So, right. So, I mean, HSLDA does, has done exactly that. You guys said you're going to be there um, to help and support. And that's exactly what I feel you guys have done. So thank you. Um, you you've helped, but not too much. It's like, you're, you're still letting me lead, but you're still there when I need it. Um, and that goes Good. for both you and Kevin. Um, I know when I needed some legal advice for SOFA status things, um, Kevin was right there uh, willing to talk when um, I needed him. So yeah, it, it's, a, it's a lot of work. <laughs> um, like I said, there is the donation aspect of it, which, you know, we try not to send those letters out too early, but you don't want to wait too late because we do have the APO system that we have to think about. Um, and then the resort. The resort's another one that I talk to on a weekly basis. Um, now doing the second conference, I'm really learning how the resort works and, you know, what what I can and cannot do, where I can push the envelope or can't. Um, they were graciously enough to give us 15 extra rooms, about 10, 12, 15 extra rooms um, last week. So we now have added room to the conference because we were getting wow. close to our, um, our full capacity. Um, but I would wow. say I probably do a good five hours, five to 10 hours a week. Um, some weeks it's more, some weeks it's less. It just depends. Um, I know you guys can't see, but along the wall here in my schoolroom, there's not, there's about 15 boxes. And so Danielle and I go through and we, um, we're going to have raffle tickets. And so we go through and we make flyers for each one and we have to coordinate which curriculum is going to go for which night. So it's a lot, it's a lot. And now that the, the, the time's getting shorter. It's going to be probably a little bit more meetings. I just requested another meeting for two weeks from now from the team to make sure that we have all our ducks in a row. And, you know, um, everyone's going to have color coordinated name tags because of the child care. I want to make sure um, that that aspect is taken care of and that the kids are safe. Um, so it, it's, it's a lot, but it's something that I absolutely enjoy doing. I absolutely enjoy doing. Um, my kids are watching me do something um, and the challenges I face with that and how I handle it and the phone calls. So I feel like I'm teaching them um, alongside of me because I'm sitting right here doing all the work while they're homeschooling. This is our homeschool room. Right. Um, right. So it, it's been amazing. It's been amazing. That is so awesome. That is just absolutely awesome. So I wanted to get back to uh, the school liaison officers with Ruth. So I had a chance to talk to her, obviously, with lots of emails and interactions. And we did, I think we did the Zoom call and all. And, and she's just such, a, she's a fabulous uh, resource and asset. And, and she's she's pulling in and, you know, uh, and school liaison officers around Europe have gotten approval from, you know, uh, supervisors right. and all higher ups, right, <laughs> to, to be able to attend. So that's going to be awesome. And you have a separate area set aside for 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 our right yeah well, i'm not a school but you know our activities yes yeah 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 so we have where we have all of our workshops for the homeschool families and then i have reserved a special room for her to be able to train the slows and for them to have their own meetings um when they're not attending any of our workshops um in with the conference so yeah she has her own designated space and yeah she has been crucial because she has contacted me with some military folks some recruiters in the area and so yes. the air force was going to come out unfortunately now the air force had training and they ended up planning it the same weekend back in the states of the conference so they can't come um so that's kind of a bummer but i mean she's been on it uh, anytime we needed something i know that i can email her and say okay what do you think about this and she'll either have advice or tips or hey i have a contact for that um, before we were doing the child care uh, with you guys, uh, able to it um, there at the resort, I had called the local CDC to find out if we can utilize them, you know, as hourly care and so on and so forth. And they had told me no. So I called up Miss Ruth and I'm like, all right, Miss Ruth. They told me no. She goes, do your call. thing, right? Miss Ruth, do your, do your thing. thing. Right, <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, the answer was still no because of staffing okay. and there's yeah. so much that they can yeah. do, right? Yeah. I mean, it right. is what it is. Exactly. They don't have a magic yeah. wand, but they can. They do don't they have do. a magic wand, but at <laughs> least, you know, they, I, she tried. Then that's all I yeah. asked for is for someone to try. 
Exactly, exactly. We appreciate that. Definitely. Um, another another uh, asset that you have that has been supporting you is your, I believe, your ambassadors that you have. Is that the term that you oh, yeah. have used for different I, installations around Europe? So I want to I want to also real quickly say if you're watching, please just uh, comment where you are watching from. I see we have viewers just uh, so we can say hello to you. But yeah, tell us about the ambassadors. And I know I've tried to like rally up a few like an Aviano and Rhoda, but tell me, tell me about yeah. those people as well. Yeah. So this, yeah, this year I decided to do ambassadors. I may change the name to liaisons. I don't know. Why. Okay. I don't know why I stuck with ambassadors. I think liaison sounds- makes more sense. I don't know. We'll see. Um, <laughs> but we have them from Italy. I have them in UK, all over Germany. Uh, I don't think I have anybody in Spain. Um, I do have okay. Slow there that I'm in contact with, but I don't have anybody in Rhoda. I want a friend in Rhoda. Okay. Yes, <laughs> yes. I'm trying yes. to make that connection. <laughs> yeah, I know. Right. I um, want a friend in a couple of places. <laughs> exactly. exactly. That's, that's the other line behind all jump this. On, Natalie, yeah, on jump on Space A. Right, Kevin? Exactly. Let's, do it. Let's go. Exactly. So, yeah, I have a, um, a private group chat that I keep with them on Facebook. And okay. that way, if I ever needed, like, quick information, and because everyone has a chance to, you know, Facebook, not everyone's on Facebook, but it's a great yes. platform um, to put out information besides a website, right. Um, right. which we're thinking about doing. So the ambassadors are exactly that. They're kind of like my link to all the different locations throughout Europe. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, we have them from all over. And they, I can tell when they post something because the minute they post it, all of a sudden we have four or five people joining the group. So awesome. whatever they're doing, it's working. So it's, yes. it's great. But I may be changing that name next year to li- liaison. What do you think? I, that may be, it might be better. I, I, I think both are perfectly fine. <laughs> yeah. Whichever one. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and what I was thinking is uh, the ambassadors, yes, they are promoting the, the current, you know, the event, the future event that's coming in a few weeks, but they are also just advocating for the conference overall, meaning for those that may not be able to attend this year, they know that this is right. an annual event. And so they can start to look forward to next year. And so it's really yeah, good I get to that get in question. Front of people. Yeah. yeah. I get that question a lot if we're going to continue this every year. And I was like, Yeah. <laughs> as long as I'm here and as long as I'm will, you know, as long as I can, I I will continue every year um yes. to do it. So yeah, so far this is the second one. I'm shooting for yeah. the third. It's so exciting. Maybe. Michelle, you may have mentioned it. Is this a, is this a live only event or is this a, is it a hybrid option? I think it's live, but I just want to make sure people know that it's not, it's not, there's not a streaming capability, right? There is not right now. There's not a streaming capability. We did approach that for a, a hot minute. Um, and we decided to table it possibly maybe for next year. Uh, I felt like it grew too much and I think growth uh-huh. is great. Um, but I also believe that too much growth, then you can stumble. And I did not want that. I felt like we already got the child care, which is something that I want to make sure that everything's taken care of in that home front. Um, we had the rooms and now the double scheduling with the workshops. So I felt like that was enough growth for one year. Um, right. Let me get through this one. And then maybe the following <laughs> years, uh, yeah. we will be able to do something more virtual or I don't know. I, I have to do a little bit more research on that one, but yes. Yeah, I just want people to know that if, you know, to, to not register and just hope to attend virtually, it's just so they right. know that they an option so they can. <laughs> yeah, they no, absolutely. And I get that question quite a bit. Yeah, I get that question quite a bit as well. Is this going to be virtual? No, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, Kevin, that was great that you brought that out to make sure that, to be, you know, clear to our uh, listeners because everything, you know, we're in such a virtual world, right? And so, mm-hmm. Families yeah. may be thinking, oh, I can attend this virtually. But, you know, I'm thinking you have taken on so much. And w- when I look at and hear the stats and the growth and all, um, just to try to add anything additional. Wow. You know, as a leader myself, we are still home. You know, we're homeschooling. Right. So and we aren't getting paid for any of this. This is something we're doing because we're called to we feel to you know, this is something that we're passionate about, but we still have our main responsibilities. And many of us, you know, we're spouses, our children, we're homeschooling. And so all the other is like additional in your free time, right? Which we have homeschooling right. moms have massive amounts of free time, said no one ever, right? 
So, right. So right. Absolutely. We appreciate every minute of your time that you have given to your community and to this effort. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. I mean, I'll, so, I'll, I'll, just, I'll just second, Michelle. I don't know if I've even told you this, but I sit on the um, board of the Alaska Private Home Educators. And so we're in the midst of our own. Uh, so in fact, we will get back from Alaska <clears throat> hosting that convention and five days later, we'll turn around and go to Germany to participate in this. But um, it really is a labor of love. There's value. And I would encourage folks, the in-person components of these conferences, just to network and liaison with other families, you just don't know. Um, sometimes you look at the schedule and you go, well, I don't really know if there's something that's particular for me. And I'll just tell you whether you see something on the schedule that makes you particularly excited or not the value of connecting with families throughout Europe that homeschool and are in the same similarly situated position um, will pay dividends, whether you anticipate it or not. So I would encourage you to make every effort to attend. If you can, you'll be blessed for sure. That is yeah, such a good absolutely. point. Yeah, I totally agree. Such a good point. And when you mentioned the child care, I was attending leader life, which is a uh, home educators association of Virginia, the state, one of the state orgs here in Virginia, and they have an annual leader life. So shout out to Sherry Payne for all the work that she does pulling that together and Stephanie Konicki and all of the HEAV staff, you know, we had a military homeschool leader there along with me. And so you typically, I'm the only one attending. And so I was able to get the leader, Erica Miller from Andrews Air Force uh, Base, Andrews Home Educators to attend. And so what I'm saying is that she had, there was a sacrifice, right? Because a lot of times we're not just homeschooling. And when I say just, not minimizing it, but we're not solely homeschooling families. We are military homeschooling families. And so that means that we may be in a situation where our sponsor is deployed or TDY or TAD right. and all the things. And we are typically very seldom stationed near family. So we don't always have the support to that we are that we can trust to come in and take care of our children so that moms, the homeschool mom can be free to attend the conference. So when you when we talked and I knew that as uh, our outreach program and um, with uh, Suzanne here, Stevens and all, just to say thank you to her because as an outreach, we looked and said, how can we come alongside? And so when to be able to provide that child care so moms can come, bring their children, the children will be in a safe environment and be loved on and nurtured. Right. And the moms can actually attend and uh, and be able to get supported in what they need. So like Kevin was saying, it's really going to be a benefit for them to be able to to be able to attend the conference. So I'm excited about yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. Part. Yeah. And um, we actually have a few uh, couples coming so that way the kiddos can yes. go to the child care and mom and dad can both come, which I think is crucial to a so homeschooling crucial, right? journey um, success, right? Is yes. when you have both parents involved. So um, exactly. we have a handful. I mean, off the top of my head, I want to say three or four dads that are coming. Well, actually five, if you right. include mine and yes. Danielle. So, and Kevin, I haven't even counted you, so yeah. that's six. Yeah, and Kevin, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, absolutely. The child care, it's something I wanted to add this year. And I just, I mean, we don't have the funds, right? Because a lot of the donations we have are in books, which is phenomenal. Right. That is a raffle. But to be able to have um, money to be able to pay for the resort and pay for the rooms and all that kind of stuff is, is amazing. So, yes, yeah. I'm very excited. And it's, you know, it's it's fairly atypical to go to a homeschool conference and have child care that's provided and available that you don't have to, um, you go a lot of these and, you know, they do have options for children, but a lot of them are kind of pay to play, if you will, on an activity right. here and activity there. And, and a, a relatively inexpensive conference for a family like ours, you know, can quickly become, you know, several hundred dollars just because of um, all of the activities that you want to participate in. So it really is a huge benefit. We're certainly grateful yeah. that HSL can help. And I think it'll be a benefit to the families there for sure. So that's, that's great. Absolutely. So, yeah. you know, who, who we were just talking up, right? Susan, I see a comment. So she is actually watching. So Susan, we were just talking, I don't know if you had joined, but we were saying, have you heard from Susan at Royal Air Force Lake and Heath in England? So I see that you are watching us and we wanted to know if you are coming. Will I see you again? Will Michelle see you again? We're putting you on the spot. So <laughs> hopefully you're able to. <laughs> hopefully you oh, are me able too. to. Yes. Yes. We say that with love. We, we want to see you if you're able to. So. 
Um, Absolutely. You also, have, you also have a used, uh, oh, she's responding here. Let's see here. Sorry to say I'm not coming this year. Oh, so sorry, man. Next year, it, next year, right? So uh, you have a used curriculum sale and lots of other events as well. And then, of course, Edelweiss, the resort has just so many things to do there. So tell Correct. us a little bit about that used curriculum sale. Yeah, so we're going to do the curriculum. So this will be new this year that we've done this. Um, it's going to be on the second night. <laughs> yeah. Of course, now it, it disgraced my mind when. Um, yeah, okay. well, we're going to do a few things. Yeah, we're going to do a few things. We're going to have a, um, a show and tell of sorts. Um, so I believe that's going to be that Thursday night where people are able to bring in curriculum so you can look through it, which is something that we cannot do here in Germany where you can do in the state, especially in those vendor halls, right? That's where um, that's where you get to actually open a curriculum, look at it, see, does this fit my family? Does this fit my needs? Yes. So on and so forth. And so yes. we're going to have to, we depend on each other a lot for that. So um, decided to couple it this year. If you want to show any books the following night, you'll be able to sell those books if need be. Yes. If you want to keep them, of course, for other children, and just put them away in your room and don't sell them. Um, mm -hmm. So we're going to have the youth curriculum bell. We're going to have a special hour for the speakers. Um, what we're trying to make sure we do this year is have two options for people that if they don't want to go to the curriculum sale or they have nothing to buy or they're brand new and they haven't started yet, they can go over and speak with the, uh, the speakers. So we'll have a social hour just for the speakers. Um, so it's going to be, I mean, we have a lot of little things going on. And of course, the raffle. Um, the raffle is getting so big that we may have to be dividing it up into different nights. <laughs> Danielle and I just talked about that tonight um, because it is, I mean, I have like 40 bags and I can't imagine trying to put 40 bags on six, on three, six foot tables. So we're going to have to divide them up. So we may be adding more to the conference because of the raffle item. So I'm yeah, laughing the because... Yeah. Go ahead. I'm just laughing. I, no, you've been, I mean, I, you've been saying like, uh, you get a raffle, you get a raffle ticket. And I've been like, oh, wow. Okay. Here's another one. Here's another one. So, but people love it. Oh, I try to so, give people so many. If anyone's watching and you're yes. going to the conference, comment. I'll give you, Cause you three, get a raffle. Raffle. <laughs> three raffles. <laughs> I think that's awesome, though. It adds so much fun. Conferences should be fun. They should be nurturing, support. And fun fellowship, all the things we've been talking about. Absolutely. Kevin's mentioned yeah. importance yeah, and I have of a couple that, of ideas so. for games, yeah. you know, a couple yeah. of things here and there. And um, yeah. the teens are going to come in and giving away raffles. And I don't know. Like, I try, I mean, you have to have fun. I mean, that's just, yes. you know, yeah. you have to I have fun. That. Homeschooling is serious that. enough. Yes. Yes. So, uh, is registration still open? We're winding down now with our event, with our live, but is registration still open? Yes, ma'am. It's still open until the 4th of April. So we have a okay. few more weeks, maybe two weeks um, before we have to close it because the 4th of April is exactly 30 days out. Um, okay. So that's why they were, they were able to give me a few extra rooms, which is perfect timing um, right before our um, end date of 4 April. So once 4 April rolls around, there'll be no more reservations. Cancellations <laughs> will be done. Um, and yeah, I mean, I believe we're at 60 rooms, so we, wow. we were that close to being full and now we're a few more rooms in place. So we're, I'm very, very, very excited. I am so excited. Oh, that we have a... absolutely amazing. Yeah. Did you see the comment? I wanted to make sure you see this. Judy. Yeah. Hi, Miss Judy. Yeah. Yep. So she, hello, yeah, Miss so Judy. I mean, come on, Judy, come on, Spandalum, come on. <laughs> Spandalum, yeah, absolutely. I actually see my inbox. I have two messages. I'm sure one is from you, so I will reply <laughs> back to when I get off. <laughs> so we, we're sending you more people, Michelle. More people. <laughs> Love it. I don't know what I'm going to do with everybody, but you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll all just have a great time. Yeah, we will definitely. We will have a great time. So I don't want to forget uh, the Edelweiss Resort. Um, well, fabulous place. I was blessed to be able to stay there. My my husband and three, no, two sons, our, our oldest and middle son at the time, uh, attend a Boy Scout camp there. And then myself, mm -hmm. our youngest daughter and the baby traveled up at towards the end and were able to just enjoy that part of Germany. So I'm excited to bring my husband and our youngest son back. Last time he left, uh, 
we left Italy uh, was he was six. And so he remembers a few things about Europe. And so he's excited and great opportunity as a homeschooling family to military homeschooling family to be able to travel and take advantage of all of the opportunities. So at Advice, I just yeah. wanted to acknowledge them and um, the resort there um, just yeah. for willingness been... to support you in the conference. Yes. Yes. They've been instrumental. Rachel has put up with a lot from me. Um, I owe her a great big bouquet of flowers <laughs> yeah. when I show up. Thank you, Rachel. Thank but, you. Yeah. We appreciate Rachel's you. Been amazing. So I don't know if there's any questions. I don't see any questions, but if, uh, if I've missed anything, please comment again and just, um, if you're watching the replay later, like I said, you can go ahead and put some comments and questions in there. Even if you're trying to reach out to Michelle, we'll make sure we get back. Don't miss that cutoff deadline. I think you said April 4th. Did I hear that right? April 4th, you all. Germany time. So, <laughs> so anyway. <laughs> So uh, this is has been such a great conversation. I don't know, Kevin, did you, did you want to uh, have anything to say towards the end? We're getting ready to round it up. I just appreciate you being here too. Well, yeah, just because uh, just because Judy chimed in, you know, um, we will have a specific discussion with the slows on some <clears throat> specific, you know, some kind of issues that are directed towards them. And I look, I really look forward to meeting them and having that discussion. In fact, Ruth emailed me a couple of weeks, maybe last week about, uh -huh. um, you know, what benefits extend to a military, international military homeschooling family from their state of record or for the state that they came from or maybe where they filed a declaration in the past. So there, there is some intricacies there that I think are probably helpful. And so, um, Judith, I'd invite you and anyone else as a slow to, to come. I think you'll be encouraged um, uh -huh. and, and hopefully learn a, learn a great deal to better support your communities where you're located. So. Thanks for tuning in today, for sure. And Natalie, and Michelle, good to see you guys. Natalie, it's a pleasure to work with you, Michelle. I look forward to meeting you. And uh, yeah, thanks yeah. for having me. Yeah, same great, here, great, Kevin. Great. So thank you so much, Michelle and Kevin, for joining. And I hope this conversation has been informative for those watching. While we might not be able to always travel to attend a conference, I am available to support virtually by offering workshops. Uh, Kevin and I, we work together on military related issues, specifically um, the legal. I will bring Kevin in. And so, um, and his perspective as a, as a homeschooling father as well. So um, definitely reach out. I have done virtuals with Okinawa, which by the way, Michelle, Okinawa is having a small conference. And I guess this may be their, I don't know if it's their first or second, really small. And mm -hmm. when they heard about what is happening, they were like, oh, you mean, wow. We would love to have HSLDA in Okinawa or something. I hope. I, no, we won't be able to do it this year. But I do want everyone listening to know within the military homeschooling community that this is one of the parts that uh, I do as outreach uh, to come alongside you as leaders and support you and get you connected to the school liaison officers, the resources that we have here at HSLDA, to our awesome attorneys like Kevin. We have a whole staff of other attorneys, uh, our compassion grants, our group services with Darren. Uh, our educational consultants. I'm trying to think uh, quickly if I'm missing anyone else. We have Facebook lives like this and webinars all to support military homeschooling families. And so definitely we know that we uh, as military homeschool families, we do face unique challenges. So here we're working hard at HSLDA to develop resources to help you find connection and encouragement. Mm -hmm. So I really appreciate you all uh, joining in. Um, we also have a directory. So I mentioned about group services. So if you are a military homeschool support group leader, please reach out. We do have a directory. We would love to have your group listed in. We are not able to list it on our own. For example, if I know you have a group, I could not put like KMC homeschoolers. I could not put that in there. Uh, Michelle would have to. So you as a leader need to contact us and reach out. My email is military at hslda.org. And you can reach me. And if you have any questions, definitely I'll forward them to the respective departments here that will handle uh, handle and be able to be responsive to you. Also, I see we have, um, I see, is this, okay, we have a question that just came in. Um, let me see here. And I may let our, uh, yeah, I may let our, um, 
I'm trying to read my, my curse is not, okay, there. All right, I may let our um, moderators be able to answer that one as well. But I wanted to also make sure that you realize that we also have military discount link uh, to be able to join. So if you're not a member currently of HSLDA, we would love to have you consider joining. And so the military uh, link to join is hslda.org forward slash military discount. So please consider that, as well as we have a YouTube channel. HSLDA is on YouTube, so some of you all have watched us before. There is a military playlist there on our YouTube channel, so definitely you can access all of the previous uh, Facebook Lives and webinars we've done. And so thanks again, Michelle and Kevin and everyone else that's tuned in and joined us next uh, month. Uh, we are going to have a conversation I'm really super duper excited about as well. And that is with school liaison officers from the Navy, the Air Force, Marine Corps, and Army. They will be at the top levels at headquarters for all of them will be on a Facebook Live. So it's going to be a crowded live and we're going to be having so much conversation and fun. And I'm excited about that. Uh, definitely, Kevin, I need to get that information to you as well. But I appreciate all of you. I'll thank you so much for joining. And again, if you're watching the replay, go ahead and feel free to leave comments. Have a wonderful day. Thank you, Natalie, so much for having me. Thanks, you Natalie. You're so welcome. You're welcome.